Welcome to another Shadow of War video. The open world of Mordor is a big part of what makes Shadow of War so appealing. At least to us. A large open world always seems amazing, but creating an interactive world is also important. In this video we'll discuss if Monolith delivers on the size of the open world and we'll take a look at the different regions and fortresses that will be playable. There is some exciting stuff, so let's get quickly into it. Let's start with the map size, since that's something you're probably most interested in. First of all, Michael the Player mentioned in an interview that the world of Shadow of War is four times larger than the world in Shadow of Mordor. Keep in mind that Shadow of Mordor has two regions, meaning that it will be roughly eight times as large as each playable region in Shadow of Mordor. But we wanted to compare the map ourselves. With the Mithril edition came an image of the cloth map. We don't know if this map is an actual representation of the in-game map, but for the purpose of this video we'll assume it is. We'll go over the regions after the comparison, but one of them has been in Shadow of Mordor, Udun. So when comparing this we're once again assuming two things. One that the size of Udun in Shadow of War is similar to that in Shadow of Mordor, and two that the scale of this map is the same as in-game. When comparing Udun from Shadow of Mordor to Udun from Shadow of War, you can see that the map is huge. Way bigger than the four times that Michael the Platter mentioned. So there's a little bit of discrepancy here. We actually managed to find some footage where they showed the distance to a fortress assault mission and actually beforehand showed the map. Meaning we essentially could calculate the distance for the map. The sad thing is that the cloth map didn't show us the bottom part of Mordor, meaning we can calculate the size of the region of Nernen, but not for the entire map. We can have an approximation of the size of this region this way. What we did was the following. We drew a line on the map of Nernen between the player and the mission. We know that this distance is 1293 feet or just under 395 meters. We know that there is a height difference, so keep in mind that it's probably slightly less than it actually shows. Sadly, it's the best thing we have. What we did next is copy and paste this line horizontally. As you can see, it's about 5350 feet wide. Or, for everyone that doesn't use the fucking metric system, it's 1630 meters across. Vertically, it's a bit smaller with it being just over 3600 feet or 1103 meters vertically. There you have the size of Nernin. Like we mentioned, we couldn't apply it to the whole map as Nernin isn't visible on it yet, but it kind of gives us an image of the scale of the entire map. We'll quickly move on to the regions that are in the game. We don't know too much about how many and even which regions are confirmed. We know a few, but that's nothing new. Instead of showing you the regions, we'll show you the locations of the fortresses and look up the regions on the map. Sometimes multiple fortresses can reside in one region, or so it seems. As can be seen from the end of the Minus Itil gameplay trailer, we can see that there will be a lot of fortresses. From the top left to the bottom right, we have Minas Itil or Minas Morgul. This fortress is called Kirith Ungol. This is the tower where Frodo was captured naked. We don't know what the region is called, but it's on top of the outer fence, which are the mountains to the border on the west side of Mordor. Next, there is also a fortress in the region of Udun, the region near the Black Gates, which is mainly covered in ashes and is a fairly dark region. It is the fortress of Durthang, as can be seen on the plot map. There is one fortress near Orodruin, or Mount Doom. This could be part of the Garg Angren region or the plateau of Gorgoroth. Both are on the cloth map. Which brings us to our next fortress, which is Baradur. It lies in the region of Gorgoroth with Mount Doom. It's probably the end fortress since it's Sauron's ultimate fortress. Further east lies Saragost, which is the large snowy region from the first gameplay trailer. North of it lies a fortress and with it a region as well, but we couldn't find it on any map. It lies just beyond the Mountains of Shadow. This could be Kirit Gorgor, which was next to Dagorlad where the big battle against Sauron took place. Even further north, far beyond the borders of Mordor, lies another fortress. On both the cloth map and any Mill earth map there is nothing there. It's in the larger region of Rovanion, 
and to the right of Degerlat. To its left lies another fortress in Degerlat, and all the way to the right there is another one. Returning to Mordor, we can see two more fortresses near the middle passage. The fortress on the right is called Tenon Engren, but the one on the left is currently unknown. To the top left, we can see that there are more fortresses. These are Osgiliath and Minas Tirith. There are two more to the left, but these are unknown. This is pretty exciting since we're most likely going to Gondor as well. Following this, we can see five fortresses towards the bottom and the right. These are Towerband, which is a fortress prison near Nurnen, an unknown fortress on the island, the Nurnen fortress we've seen in the gameplays, a fortress near Kant, and finally a big fortress in Lidlet. These last two, Kant and Lidlet, are regions towards the eastern and southern border of Mordor. And finally, we can see that there are two fortresses in a region below the Sea of Nurnen, which essentially are still part of Nurnen. We don't know the names of these yet. This brings the total of all the fortresses up to 23, which I believe was confirmed in a livestream. The exciting thing is that we're actually crossing the borders of Mordor and are heading into not only Gondor, which would be exciting enough, but also into Rovanion. In an article, Michael the Platter confirmed that we're going outside the borders of Mordor and even mentioned Gondor in the citation, so it is highly probable. Check out the links in the description for even more information. That's it for now, thanks for watching, consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video or dislike if you didn't, in either case leave us some constructive feedback on the video, art style, commentary and content. In case you want to stay updated, consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell for instant pop-ups when we upload. If you have any questions, want to share your ideas or if you simply want to start a discussion, let us know in the comment section down below. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll hopefully see you soon.